Hello again, everyone. I'm Jeremy Jones, and welcome to another episode of Coach's Corner. In past episodes, we've learned about aiming, aiming with English. In our last episode, we went over the physical process before the actual swing starts. That would be, again, aiming with the stance, uh, getting in a good position with the feet. Um, we learned in the last episode about pre-strokes, uh, then the pause at the cue ball uh, before the actual backswing starts. Uh, so again, aim with the feet. You get down on the ball. We make a couple of nice pre-strokes. Usually two is about all you need to the smaller pre-strokes to the pause. And that's kind of where we left it off in the last episode. That brings us up into the stroke. But I still want to go over a few things with the pause on the cue ball and how, why it's so important. Um, you'll see a lot, some players that don't have the pause at the cue ball. What happens with the pre-strokes when you don't pause at the cue ball, they usually get faster, almost like a wind-up. So we want to stay away from that. We don't want to prepare for power. We want to start to understand if we stroke the ball well, power will always be there. So again, the pause at the cue ball is so important just to start our timing, but also to get our eyes focused. If we never stop the cue, it's very hard to get focused whether we're an object ball last player or a cue ball last player. And both are obviously in today's game uh, very doable. So I'm more of a cue ball last player. I always have been. That's what agreed with me. I can't argue either way on that point. But again, the pause at the cue ball, not only for the essential start of the backswing, which we'll talk about here shortly, but to get the eyes focused, if we never stop the cue, the cue, the eyes just kind of move with the cue stick and just kind of tends to lean towards a lot of problems later on. So we're a little past the pause. Um, now I want to start to talk about the start of the backswing. And this to me um, is probably the most important part of the stroke itself as far as setting up for success. And what I mean by that is a lot of people talk about the entire backswing. Uh, they talk about getting yourself in a good place where I'm kind of different like that, where I kind of treat pool like a lot of other sports. And for instance, if I was to throw a ball, I say it's however far, 20 feet. Well, I don't try to calculate for 20 feet. I come away casually and I let the arm go where it wants. And that kind of agrees for me just accelerating the arm to throw the ball 20 feet. If I was to throw 50 feet, I still wouldn't jerk the arm back. I would come away casually. The arm would go a little further back because it's a longer throw and then I would accelerate. So that's kind of how I treat pools well and that's what I've seen from the best players in the world for a long time. <clears throat> so again, when we pause at the cue ball, it has a lot of purposes. But the one I really want you to concentrate on as far as the stroke is just the start of the backswing. To me, in playing 30 plus years of playing pool, um, the start of the backswing seems like the most important and the reason, a bunch of reasons why, but in 30 some years of playing pool, I've never once, not once, have I ever seen someone come away smooth and then get, uh, get quick in the middle. I've just never seen it happen. And then on the other end, I've never really seen someone come away quick and then all of a sudden get real smooth in the middle. They'll try to slow it down and your brain tries to correct things, but it just never seems to work out that well. So again, the pause at the cue ball to me, super essential for your eyes. And then getting control of the start of the backswings. Because what I want you to think about is we're going to let the cue go where it wants. That will agree with most shots. And when we talk about the transition, which is when we start going back and then changing directions, that's what the transition is called, that's when it seems to become its most comfortable when we just kind of let the arm do what it wants to do. So that's, to me, one of the biggest components in the swing for success is the start of the backswing. Now, <clears throat> let's start to talk about what the start of the backswing also does. And this is, was the same in every sport I ever learned and really the same of eight years of teaching, I've seen this over and over. So the start of the backswing, in my opinion, it really starts to create the start of the downswing for the most part. There is one exception and I'll explain that as well. 
But the start of the backswing, when we learn to just rock the cue away, you can see how it develops a rock on the way down. Now, at the biggest problem I've seen with the takeaway on the backswing is we get quick. Uh, whether we're nervous or it's just kind of what we've ingrained as the start of our backswing. So when we get quick like that, we actually create a quick movement here. And then we can't really accelerate the cue when we start out so quick. Normally we have a constant speed or the most common one is we start out fast and the brain gets involved and says, oh no, we're going too fast. <laughs> Let me slow down a little bit. We end up decelling into the cue ball. So again, the start of the backswing, in my opinion, is super important, not only to get a good takeaway, a good rhythm, but it also really starts to create the start of the downswing, which is super important if we want to learn to accelerate the cue. Now, the one exception is if we're very slow and controlled, that never hardly ever develops a slow start to the downswing, and I'll explain. Normally, when we're slow and controlled, we build anxiety in the swing. Like, oh, I'm ready to swing forward. The brain just kind of works like that. So you'll see almost all players that have a very slow and deliberate backswing, they almost always have a pause in the back. And the reason being is, when you're slow and controlled, it's really nothing to rhythm off of. So again, if we can, we want to develop something that's, of course, relaxed and calm, but not so controlled, whether that be fast controlled or slow controlled. And the one common thing you'll also see with both those controlled swings is almost always a pause in the back. And the reason why is your brain's trying to help you out. So I look at the pause in the back for the most part as a Band-Aid. It's just something to actually correct a flaw rather than promote good things happening. So again, if we can pause at the cue ball, a little more relaxed start, okay? That'll start to get us to where we can have a relaxed start on the way down. Now, if we talk about excelling, accelerating the cue on the downswing, if we have a relaxed start on the downswing, very easy to accumulate speed, and it's kind of, from what I've seen, what humans want to do. It just seems inherent. So if we're looking for the ideal effortless motion, again, relax, relax, and then we'll get into the next part of the swing, which is basically just completing it. So again, back and forth. Now we're gonna talk about the actual downward motion after we've gotten through a pretty good transition. So this is where the swing actually becomes easier in my opinion. What I've found in eight years of teaching and doing it for a long time, is if we just keep the hand going, acceleration will be there. There'll be tons of power. Um, it just, again, like, kind of like what wants to happen in the motion once we start it out correctly. Now, the biggest part of completing the swing, and this to me, when nerves are high, I see pros have this problem more than anything else. Of course, amateurs on the same, are the same situation. So. Once we get in a good position coming with the downswing, okay, all you have to do is keep the physical movement of the back hand through the cue ball and acceleration will stay. One of the biggest uh, uh, kind of combination of things happening on the downswing is people get used to quitting. And when we quit, we hit. So basically your brain will feel the stroke quitting and then add the hand in there as a hit to try and save the shot or produce some type of power. This is very, very common. You can become a habit with that. So one of the best things we can do is as we're making the swing itself is just make sure that we finish and hold. A lot of people that quit and hit, they retract the cue, they're up off the ball quickly, right? And they get used to it, and they have enough talent to actually get it done a lot of times, but it certainly seems to not hold up from day to day. So again, good start to the backswing, creates a nice relaxed start down. Now we only have to just complete the hand through the ball, acceleration and power will be there. So if we can, that's a pretty good little um, what's the right word for it? Pretty good little uh, uh, 
you know, 10 minutes of how to stroke the ball and very easy uh, to repeat. And you'll start to see effortless power. Now, you're not going to feel the speed in the swing. That's the thing about the effortless swing. We don't see the speed and we don't really feel the speed, but you'll certainly see the results. And one of the biggest tips you can ever have is try and feel like the backswing and the downswing are working together. We don't want separation. And what I mean is a nice backswing, let's take off like that. We don't want that. Remember, just rock the cue and finish, and the stroke will get better.